Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Who does not love a good horror story? From movies like The Exorcist to The Conjuring, tales of demonic possessions and exorcism have fascinated humans for centuries. Whether just mental illness or possession, there have been some true life incidents that are bizarre. Here are the top 10 weirdest exorcism stories that will shake you to your core. Number 10. Gottlieben Didis. In 1843, the exorcism of Gottlieben Didis, a 28-year-old woman from Germany, turned out to be one of the weirdest and most challenging for Pastor Johann Blumhardt. Didis repeatedly claimed her house was haunted and she was often seen in a trance. After meeting with her, Blumhardt recognized signs of demonic possession, especially when Didis became violent and required restraint. Didis's exorcism allegedly took Blumhardt two years, during which she was said to have levitated, spewed filth on the priest, and even vomited nails and blood. One of the most striking things Blumhardt learned while engaging with the spirits possessing Gottlieben is the majority of them claimed to be human in origin. Didis would often slip into convulsions and even experience dark apparitions where she would scream about demons and hell. Bloomheart finally emerged victorious after Didis's last exorcism. Number 9. Emma Schmidt In the early 1910s, Emma Schmidt, an American woman from Iowa, began exhibiting signs of possession from the time she was 14. During her several exorcism sessions, priests reportedly started seeing unspeakable horrors and acts. Her last exorcism lasted 28 days and ended on December 23, 1928, when Emma was 46. The exorcist, a Capuchin priest named Father Theophilus Reisinger, reported how she kept vomiting the entire time and spewed out substances that weirdly resembled macaroni and tea leaves, although she had eaten nothing. At one point, she spoke in different languages and levitated up to the ceiling. Father Reisinger recalled how Emma would answer him, saying she was possessed by several demons led by Beelzebub. Ultimately, the priest was able to free Emma of her predicament. Emma, known also as Anna Eklund, was the last ever exorcism sanctioned by the Catholic Church. Number 8. Clara Germana Soleil In the early 1900s, the exorcism of a possessed 16-year-old girl in South Africa was marked by one of the weirdest displays of multilingual speech exorcists had ever witnessed. Clara Germana Soleil began showing signs of possession when she would suddenly start ranting in French, Polish, and German, languages she had never heard before. Even more bizarre was when she revealed people's secrets and displayed violent acts of superhuman strength, tossing adults around in fits of rage. When her family found that she could not stand the sight of religious symbols, they called in the local priest, Father Horner Erasmus. Clara then told the priest the stunning but very eerie fact that she had made a pact with Satan himself. The priest, with help of other assistants, were allegedly successful in exercising her after a grueling two days. Number 7. Julia Famous New York psychiatrist Dr. Richard E. Gallagher would often be called by priests to help fight Satan's minions and make a psychiatric diagnosis to rule out mental illness. However, in 2012, in the case of Julia, Gallagher was convinced extraordinary and evil forces were at play. Julia, a practicing Satanist, displayed bizarre signs of possession. She would enter into a trance, speak in multiple languages and in different voices, and when meeting Gallagher, revealed facts about his life and his mother's death. Gallagher was worried when he heard the same voices on a call, even when Julia wasn't present. He arranged an exorcism in a local chapel room 
and reported how Julia levitated off the floor for 30 minutes, made objects fly off shelves, and how she screamed when holy water was sprinkled on her. Fortunately, the exorcism was ruled a success. Number 6. Marasika Irina Quinici In 2005, 23-year-old Marasika Irina Quinici, a nun who lived in the Tanaku Monastery, Romania, claimed she was plagued by Satan. Her chief complaint? He kept calling her a sinner and would make her giggle during Mass. Psychiatrist Dr. Georg Sofestrovici diagnosed her with schizophrenia, but the monastery's priest, Daniel Petri Koroshinu, felt she needed an exorcism. He convinced four other nuns to help him chain Maria to a cross, with hands outstretched, anointed her wrists and forehead with holy water, and gagged her to stop cursing. She was then left alone in a room shut for three days. On the third day, the priest opened it and began praying over her, not realizing she was already dead of asphyxiation, dehydration, and starvation. He was charged with murder and sentenced to 14 years in prison. Number 5. George Lukens In 1770, 44-year-old George Lukens, known as the Yatin Demoniac of England, displayed his first signs of demonic possession, ironically, while he was at a church service celebrating Christmas. Lucan's suddenly began singing in demonic voices and even backward in Latin, which might have creeped out the entire congregation. In 1778, clergymen decided he was possessed by seven demons and began an exorcism on the eventful date of Friday the 13th, held in the local church. Seven priests, including churchgoers, prayed over Lucan's, even as he shouted and screamed profanities at them, claiming he wanted power over the world of men. According to legend, the exorcism was a success, and Lucan's claimed the demons told him they were going back to hell and would never bother him again. Number 4. The Demon House Houses themselves can be haunted too, and a cottage on Carolina Street, purchased by Latoya Amans and her family in November 2011, seems to add credence to the theory. Immediately after moving in, the house exhibited paranormal activity, with huge black flies constantly hogging the porch in winter, and a black shadow always muddying the living room with invisible boots. Investigators and clairvoyants claimed 200 demons haunted the house, and Latoya was advised by the local church to draw crosses on doors and perform several rituals, but to no avail. Her children began displaying violent behavior, and her daughter frequently felt as if someone was choking her. The children were taken away by child services in 2012, and yet the haunting intensified. Finally, local Reverend Maginot, in the presence of officials, performed a two-hour exorcism during which an entity attacked the family's DCS case manager, Samantha Illick, breaking her ribs. Latoya's children were returned, and the house was purchased by paranormal investigator Zach Baggins in 2016 in order to shoot a documentary. Instead, he ended up demolishing it immediately. Number 3. Ronald Hunkeller The 1949 exorcism of Ronald Hunkeller, or Roland Doe, was so famous it terrified many in Cottage City, Maryland, and inspired the movie The Exorcist. His family reported how their Aunt Tilly died mysteriously and how religious objects would often fall off or even fly off the walls. There was always a knocking and banging appearing out of nowhere in their house. What made priests feel it was a clear case of possession was the fact that the strange phenomena finally concentrated in Roland's room. Roland's exorcism took four days, during which priests found the words Christ and Hell appearing on his body, and objects constantly whizzed past their heads. He even urinated in front of the priests. In the end, 
Head priest Father Bowden reported how Roland finally spasmed and fell to the ground, uttering quietly, he is gone. Number two, Annalise Michelle. The haunting and possession of 23-year-old Annalise Michelle from Germany not just inspired the 2005 movie, The Exorcism of Emily Rose, it was truly a bizarre event that ended in tragedy. Annalise began displaying weird behavior when she was just 16, falling into a trance at school and bedwetting at night. By 1970, she began suffering seizures, and yet doctors could not find anything wrong with her. By 1973, repeatedly sick, Annalise began displaying more bizarre behavior, like licking her own urine off the floor, stripping naked, eating coal, and avoiding religious objects. Her family and local priests were convinced she was possessed, so they decided to exercise her. Over the next 10 months, Annalise underwent 67-hour-long horrifying exorcism sessions in which she was chained and held up as clergymen tried freeing her of the six demons they believed possessed her. Annalise didn't survive, and her autopsy revealed she was battered, bruised, had blackened eyes, and even fractured teeth. In 1978, the priests and Annalise's parents were sentenced for negligent homicide, fined, and sent to jail. Number 1. Janet Moses one of the most bizarre exorcisms ever in modern culture was when the family of Janet Moses of New Zealand firmly believed she was possessed by a demon after stealing a Taonga, a Maori artifact. Even after she returned the statue, she still displayed bizarre behavior, prompting the entire family to perform a Maori-style exorcism even more horrifying than what you would see in a movie. Janet's family sat on her, poured water on her face, while others began sucking on her eyes in an attempt to remove the demons. The constant water flowing into her eyes, nose, and mouth ultimately drowned and killed Janet. The family instead felt the demon had fled into Janet's 14-year-old cousin and then began scratching and rubbing the girl's eyes until they started bleeding. The bizarre ritual continued for nine hours until the police arrived and arrested the lot. In a trial lasting 29 days, five of the eight received only community sentences after they confessed to improvising because they did not know how to exercise the demon Makutu. Thanks for watching. Which of these exorcisms do you think would have been most frightening to witness? Let us know in the comments. A good kind of possession is one you can have that will never do you or anyone else any harm. Become possessed by a regular, overwhelming desire to watch more of our videos by subscribing, clicking the notifications bell, and giving this video a like.